Yes, you read that title right. The Mushroom Kingdom is an imperialist state. That sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? Well, it is pretty ridiculous in the sense that I don't think Nintendo intended for this interpretation of the game's text. However, as a longtime Mario enjoyer, it's something I couldn't help but notice. There are a lot of adventures where the motivations of the Mushroom Kingdom can come into question, though it's never directly brought up because you're the one fighting for them and because it's a, it's a Mario game, come on. As an example, let's look at Super Mario Sunshine. A lot of people already know about this probably because the plot of Super Mario Sunshine is possibly the most complicated of any of the mainline Mario games, barring perhaps Galaxy. At the same time, it's also one of the silliest and leads to the highest amount of questioning. Essentially, in Super Mario Sunshine, Mario is wrongfully arrested for the crime of stealing Isle Delfino's light while on vacation there because a guy named Shadow Mario, who really doesn't look that much like Mario besides the same general shape, uh, Mario isn't really an opaque blue, was seen stealing said light. There is a kangaroo court trial with Mario ending up guilty and Peach is the defense for some reason. She definitely has the resources to get a better lawyer, yet she's the one representing Mario in court here. Something smells fishy. Mario ends up cleaning the island and restoring the shine power and beats up Bowser who just so happened to be there. I mean, he was the one ordering Shadow Mario around. I think that this entire situation, including the stuff with Shadow Mario, was actually a ploy in order for the Mushroom Kingdom to gain more power over the world at large. Delfino Plaza never mistook Mario for Shadow Mario in good faith. Peach paid off the police force to arrest him and make him fix the place. Then, to the politicians of Delfino Plaza, it looked like the Mushroom Kingdom saved them, which would make working with them easier in the future. It was a way to plant confidence in the country for future endeavors and slowly get the claws of the Mushroom Kingdom into the small island nation. Something else that indicates their imperialist nature is the city of Rogueport. We never really know what Rogueport's situation or greater standing in the world is, so this one is actually just a big leap of logic, but I think it'd be a funny natural consequence of this theory. Uh, nothing really directly connects you to Rogueport, as you visit every other area in the Thousand Year Door through other means. With that aside, Rogueport could be feeling the effects of the imperialist Mushroom Kingdom being exerted on it. Crime is high and the economy is plummeted due to Mushroom Kingdom intervention. Again, we don't actually know for sure that it's due to Mushroom Kingdom intervention, but for the purposes of this fun experiment, I'll just say that it is. It's a city ruled by crime because the infrastructure left behind after needless Mushroom Kingdom intervention failed. So many of the other places that you visit in the Mario world aside from the Mushroom Kingdom are fairly devoid of sapient life. There's Dinosaur Land, which only has a few Yoshis, the Sprixie Kingdoms, which are occupied by Bowser's forces and otherwise have nobody in them, and the same goes for the Seven Kingdoms from Super Mario Bros. 3, which are also occupied by Bowser's forces and seem to be led by puppet rulers that answer to Princess Peach directly. The only places that seem to have escaped her influences are the Kingdoms from Super Mario Odyssey, but who knows how long they'll be independent. Even Subcon, the land of dreams, wasn't safe because she conquered it with the help of Mario, Luigi, and Toad. <laughs> Can you tell how much fun I'm having with this? The final nail in the coffin for me is the existence of the Bean Star. In Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga, there exists an all-powerful wish-granting object called the Bean Star. It's the most powerful artifact in the Bean Bean Kingdom, and it would be their best fighting chance if the Mushroom Kingdom chose to invade them. Sounds pretty good, right? Here's the thing. Within the plot of Superstar Saga, something incredibly important about this artifact is revealed to us. The Bean Star can only be activated by Princess Peach's voice. That's a lot of power to hold over the Bean Bean Kingdom. The Mushroom Kingdom essentially has Queen Bean as a puppet ruler and the Bean Bean Kingdom as a puppet state. After all, Peach has the launch codes to their nukes. It's all under the control of Princess Peach. She owns everything. This is her mushroom world and we're just living in it. Obviously, I don't think this theory is literally canon. I just think it's a fun set of coincidences and interpretations to read the games under. And really, isn't that what you're looking for in a fun video game theory at the end of the day? 
This has been Arcade Everlasting, still trying to wrap my head around the controls of Super Mario Sunshine, signing off. Thank you for watching.